Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com, and this is your Photo News Fix. This fix is brought to you by Datacolor and their spring savings, though we didn't exactly have spring this year, but that doesn't matter because Datacolor is hooking you up. From now until June 5th, you can save up to $200 on select Spider 5 calibrators, including the Spider 5 Pro, Spider 5 Elite, Spider 5 Capture Pro, and the Spider 5 Studio. For more information, head on over to datacolor.com slash fro. First up, if you're a doctor or a lawyer, you may find this next story to be truly upsetting, so get your tissues ready. <laughs> But if you're neither of those two, don't worry. Be happy. Leica's discontinued the M7. That's right. Wait, wh what the f is an M7? For those who don't know, the Leica M7 replaced the Leica M6 back in 2002 and was 17 years in the making. Seriously, they were planning that camera for 17 years. This film camera brought some truly revolutionary features such as auto exposure in aperture priority mode, meaning you set the f-stop on the lens and get this, the camera sets the shutter speed. Yeah, that's amazing. Oh yeah, and they also did this. This camera also introduced the ability to automatically set your ISO based on the DX code on the film canister. Wow, something that every Pentex has been doing for a long time. Go Pentex. If you miss the boat, you may still be able to purchase the M7 starter set in black at B&H for only $59.95. What a deal. More sad news for film cameras today. Canon has officially discontinued the EOS 1V, bringing an end to 80 years of selling film cameras. First introduced in 2000, the EOS 1V was a 10 frame per second shooter that found its way into most professional sports photographers' bags, but it didn't find its way into mine because I had to be different and I owned an F5 from Nikon. Future Canon Pro DSLRs borrowed a lot of design cues from the 1V, from the shape to the buttons and I'm sure many other things. If you're wondering why were they still producing these, well, they actually stopped production in 2010, but have continued to sell it while they've had supplies. That means nobody was buying this thing. Now that sales are ending, Canon wanted to make people aware that they will continue to repair the camera through October 31st, 2025. I know what I'm gonna be on Halloween in 2025. However, after October 31st of 2020, repairs may be refused if parts are no longer available. Now the moral of the story here is if you have a Canon EOS 1V, it's probably time to retire it or find a hipster to give it to. Do you want to be a Boca? Well, the only way you can truly be a Boca is to buy the Sigma 105 f1.4 art lens. You will not be a until you own that lens. Brought to you by not Sigma. Up until this point, we didn't know how much it would cost, but we do now. The lens will set you back only $1,600. Now I say only because the Nikon version costs you $2,200. While I wait for my review unit from Sigma, I will say I'm not sure I'm gonna wanna carry this lens around. For starters, it has a lens collar, which means Sigma is suggesting you may need or want to use a monopod or tripod, or they think you're scrawny and don't have muscles to carry a lens. Mm. Get this, it weighs in at 3.62 pounds, where the Chodier Nikon 105 14 weighs in at only 2.17 pounds. To put that into perspective, here's a few things that weigh three pounds. The world's smallest cat, Mr. Peebles, a human brain, a two slice toaster, a box of wine, one and a half kilos of cocaine, and a can of Crisco. Steven, I bet there's some hipster out there who's wiping some Crisco on his lens right now. Nonetheless, the good news is it will be available for Nikon, Canon, Sigma, for some reason, and Sony E-mounts. Do you shoot raw? Do you wanna show the world that you shoot raw? Right now, in honor of the eighth anniversary of Frono's photo, you can get two random I shoot raw shirts for only $20 plus shipping, head on over to bit.ly slash random brawl until June 4th to order yours. And remember, no JPEG shooters allowed. Sorry, Mr. Rockwell. Sony has announced a new OLED electronic viewfinder that is both sharper and faster than its previous models. Dubbed the ECX339A OLED display, I do wonder what happened to the 339B. Who knows, maybe it's not here yet. This half inch display has a UXGA resolution, which is 1600 by 1200, which makes it the highest in class for its size. This display has 160% the resolution of the 3 
3337A, which was only QVGA. Now, what's the difference, you may ask? The letter U. Oh, and X2. On top of having better resolution, the new display will have a refresh rate of 240 frames per second, which is double the old one. That means carry the one, subtract 23, divide by 7.7, .7, and the old one was 120 frames per second. Sony says this faster frame rate has made it possible to capture fast moving subjects in the viewfinder with higher accuracy, so users will not miss a photo opportunity, delivering a more comfortable shooting experience. Now, you know what's funny? Do you know how much resolution an optical viewfinder actually has? Infinity and beyond! If you'd like to buy one of these for yourself come November, you can for $460 plus tax, or you can do what I'm gonna do. Wait for the future Nikon mirrorless camera to come out because it's gonna use Sony's technology for a viewfinder. And there you have it, that's your photo news fix this time around. To check out the last fix, go ahead and click on the screen right here. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And that's where we'll leave it, Jared Polinfronosphoto.com. See ya.